Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon to everyone. Today I'm going to give my lecture on human resource and training. First of all, let's look at this slide. Do you think it is right to have only one level position in the organization? You will get the answer as you go through my lecture. As a biomedical graduate, you are most likely to work in a laboratory. Here I give you the main power in a laboratory. Generally, it will have receptionist, science officer, data entry operators, housekeeping, medical laboratory technologies or MLT, phlebotomists and pathologists. As I mentioned earlier, Biomedical graduates have a high tendency to work in a laboratory, either diagnostic or research laboratory. Here I just want to share some of most beautiful laboratories around the world. Who knows, you might have a chance to work in one of these laboratories one day. Here as you can see is the laboratory in the University of Arizona and here is in Germany and this one is in the Scotland. Aren't they beautiful? Let's start with the introduction. Do you know who are the consumers of healthcare? There are patients, patients' family, physicians and other health caregivers including biomedical scientists. Therefore, the consumers of healthcare not only patients and their families, but also the healthcare givers. So, they seek quality service and products for their diagnosis, therapies and cures. Therefore, they have to rely on personnel with expertise, knowledge and skills to provide the quality that customers expect and demand. Why? Because to ensure smooth, effective flow of superior services. To have these expert and knowledgeable personnel, we need to meet the basic facets of management, process and functions, including supervision and leadership. The management process comprises several functions. First, determine the goal, then objectives are developed and communicated to all members, methods are selected, evaluation of the process and outcomes. I give you a scenario. Let's say in a laboratory, there is a lacking of science officer position. So first, you need to determine the goal by higher management level people and then you need to come up with the objectives why you need to have the science officer in the laboratory and communicated to all the members in the laboratory and then how are you going to recruit the science officer followed by evaluation and outcomes here is the organization chart in hospital laboratories. Start with clinical assistant, then phlebotomist, followed by MLT, senior MLT, MLT manager and head manager, then science officer, senior science officer, head science officer. Then the highest organization chart is the chief pathologist. Do you see the two symbols here, the asterisks and hashtags? So I give you an explanation of these two symbols. For the hashtags, which are the chief pathologist, head science officer, senior science officer, and head manager, there are more responsible in the main laboratory department while 
dress with the asterisk symbols responsible in each of the laboratory unit. However, there are some positions that require them to be responsible for both of the main lab and the lab unit. Let's move on to managerial concept. What's the definition of management? It, it, it was founded by Duncan 1989. Management is the coordination of human and non-human resources toward the accomplishment of organizational goals. Then, since the early 1900s, the concept of scientific management was founded. In order to improve efficiency, you have to determine quantitatively and qualitatively and not by common sense and intuition. That is the concept of scientific management. After you get the concept, now we move to managerial functions. Remember the organization chart? You have to identify what managers do. Example, managing operations to be done, who perform the technical work, how the work getting done, and places where it occurs. So in managerial functions, it requires first planning. It requires thinking skills. Plan formats essential components of a good plan and implementation processes. Second, organizing. It covers interpersonal skills development to better deal with people. Third, directing. Include communicating, motivating, delegating and coaching. And fourth, decision making and problem solving. It acquire and develop good problem-solving skills performing analytical procedures. Other than these four, financial acumen also considered as a very high priority function of laboratory managers. What is financial acumen? It is the ability to find ways of saving money, increasing income and better spending of money. For laboratory managers, including MLT manager and above, they are entrusted with three categories of resources. First, financials, which is operating capital budget. Second, physicals, includes managing the space, equipment and supplies. Third, human, managing the technical and support staff. So my question is, who is responsible for laboratory management and who is responsible for laboratory tests? Clue. You can check the organization chart. Alright. There are three categories of output that are expected from managerial roles. First, satisfactory performance. Second, products. One of the products is laboratory report to the physician when needed. And third, a sense of accomplishment among the staff doing the work. Next, what are the management team in the laboratory? First, laboratory directors, including head manager and head science officer. For this team, they retain ultimate responsibilities in achieving goals. For example, changes in technologies, changes in the equipment or instrument, capital investments and services rendered are finalized by this level of lab management. Then the second management team is MLT manager and science officer. They create and maintain environment for laboratory professionals to function efficiently. 
they plan, organize, direct and control the jobs. Then next, senior medical laboratory technologists. For this team, they focus more on people and also operational delivery of laboratory services. And the last one is the bench people, which is the MLT. They exercise a large number of technical skills in the performance of laboratory testing. Here we divide the management team of the laboratory into three categories daily maintenance, troubleshoot and procedure design. For daily maintenance, for example, daily QC checkup, it will conduct by the MLT and senior MLT. But for troubleshoot, for example, the machine broken down. So you need to do troubleshooting. So all the people here are responsible to do troubleshooting. And for procedure design, it will be conducted by the head science officer. Procedure design, for example, you need to change the PCR procedure or PCR machine. So this kind of task can only be performed by the head science officer. Here is the image of the managerial levels according to the skills needed. As you can see here, the supervisory technologies or the bench people, MLT, they need more technical skills and of course interpersonal skills. But for the next management levels, which are more like senior MLT, MLT manager and science officer here. They need to have a little technical skills and a little conceptual skills, but of course they also need interpersonal skills. And the higher management level, level here, which is the laboratory directors, including the head manager and head science officer, they just need a very little skills of technical but more conceptual skills and interpersonal skills. So how you can improve your job performance? It is by training and transition. It is a process designed to maintain or improve current employee performance. By training and transition, it will uncover managerial potential in employees. Laboratory directors and administrators are constantly attentive to those prospective candidates for advancement. However, training and transition depends on the target of laboratory department and the laboratory unit. So what you can do now in your position, you begin to build KSAA foundation, knowledge, skills, attitudes and attributes. By seeking a mentor or role model from among your professional colleagues, either internal or external, and you have to be very active instead of reactive. You anticipate the situations and consequences. As a summary, successful organizations in the laboratory depends on their managers or management to have vision that can influence and affect healthcare laboratories and the biomedical laboratory profession. That's all from me. Thank you.